Says Michael Popak, legal AF, the Gen 6 defendants can't help themselves. They continue to use social media and it's continued to be used as evidence against them when they screw up in court. Current example, Mark Anthony Brew, B-R-U, 41 years old from Washington State, indicted for obstruction of law enforcement, obstruction of justice, disorderly conduct. He had a gun in his waistband. He used social media before he went there to talk about attacking and destroying uh, the Capitol in the name of Donald Trump. Uh, He was turned in by a tipster. Uh, a, a good Samaritan who caught all of this on social media and arrested. Now, he was released from custody. He's not one of the Jan 6 uh, defendants that's uh, holed up in pretrial detention. He was released after pleading not guilty. But as part of being a, uh, in the highly intensive supervised release program for the Department of Justice, this guy and his lawyers have to check in on regular intervals. Well, Mark Brew was really bad and awful in the things that he said in his social media before he was picked up. And now he's failed to appear before Chief Judge Jeb Boesberg in the District of Columbia for a regular interval uh, status conference. He just blew it off. And so at the time, I guess the public defender that was assigned to the case didn't know where his client was either. And it was just a video conference. He didn't even have to appear in person and he blew it off. So, of course, the Department of Justice monitored Mr. Brew's Twitter Twitter account and came away with the following. He had no intention of appearing for the status conference. Remember, he pled not guilty to these four or five felony counts, including disorderly conduct, and is out pending his trial. In the meantime, he's going out of his way to piss off the judge, be found in contempt, and have an arrest warrant issued against him. Now, Jeb Bosberg, the chief judge here, who also, by the way, supervises all things grand jury, did cut the guy some slack. Because the Department of Justice, before they found this tweet I'm about to read to you, when he failed to appear, um, Jeb Bosberg was asked for a, to issue a bench warrant, which is what it sounds like, a warrant from the judge to the sheriffs and federal marshals to go pick up the witness, the defendant, and bring them to the court. And he didn't issue the bench warrant. He gave them instead, instead a reset of the hearing. But in the interim, In that little interval moment, uh, Mark Brew couldn't help himself and started to tweet back to a reporter, well-known reporter in this area, Scott McFarlane, about something that Scott McFarlane had said about Mark Brew failing to appear, him not liking that, and him wanting to take a certain position. So let's put up first, so that you know how we got here, let's put up first Scott McFarlane's tweet. There you have it. And it says, I'll read it for those that are listening to this podcast also, Mark Brew of Washington State becomes latest Jan 6 defendant to fail to appear for a court hearing. Per court, Brew failed to show for a June 16 hearing, then failed to show yesterday. So it was really two hearings. June 16th, he failed to appear. June 26th, he failed to appear on the reset. Brew is accused of grabbing police barricade and advancing with mob while wearing goggles and masks. A couple of small details left out of Scott McFarlane's usually solid reporting he, that this guy had a gun in his waistband and had also done a lot of emails and a Twitter account and Facebook account messages talking about him going there and confronting National Guardsmen and the like. So that Mark Brew. Well, Mark Brew... You know, he thinks he's some sort of celebrity. So he decided to respond to McFarland. And this is what the government found and brought to the judge's attention. This is after he failed to appear for the second time. Let's put up Mark Brew's tweet, or at least the excerpt of it that's included in the courts, in the uh, Department of Justice's filings. And it says, and I quote, um, nice. This is to McFarland. I certified mailed my motion to the prosecutor. I don't even know what that means. He has a public defender. I'm done. This is in bold. I'm done entertaining their bullshit. If they want me, they will come get me. Hold on, Mr. Brew. We're on our way. I'm drawing a effing line in the sand. I can't believe Americans are willingly paying money to see their effing so-called patriot heroes Go to the totalitarian clink. 
Just a reminder, Mr. Brew is not in the jail with the Jan 6 defendants. He's home in Washington State. They torture, they strip rights, they murder, and everyone is okay with letting Jan Sixers go through the motions to be unappreciated martyrs. Americans can go F themselves. I've lost my life, my family, my prosperity for the cause. I, I bet if we look deeper into this, he wasn't very prosperous and he probably didn't have good relationships with these people to begin with. But let's put that aside for a minute. So, to continue with Mr. Brew, yet still no effing backbone from Americans. I'm not a debt slave. I don't know what that means. I will not submit to a totalitarian, belligerent, de facto regime. That's a lot of words, Mr. Brew. Thanks for the info. You should make sure my reply makes it to print. He's writing to Scott McFarland. Good news, Mr. Brew. It made it to print in the form of a Department of Justice filing against you to Chief Judge Bosberg in the District of Columbia. And then he uses parens. Good for you, Mr. Brew. You know how to use, you know, proofreading grammar. And He said, okay. He said, okay. Hand signed emoji. Okay, hand sign emoji, this, and I'll talk to you about what that means in his world. Four leaf clover emoji. I'd rather die free than submit to effing tyrants. Okay, he's he's already been pictured when he was at the Trump rally before he uh, uh, charged on the Capitol with the other insurrectionists as using this symbol. This is a white supremacy symbol unfortunately, been co-opted by them, that hand symbol. And they use it in their Twitter accounts as well. So that's, he wasn't saying, okay, he was doing, you know, white supremacist rule, whatever that is on there. So that Mark Brew, now Judge Bosberg, who cut him slack twice. I mean, I don't know why, given his past, giving Bruce past, the judge just said, eh, you missed your June 16th, you missed your June 26th, we'll reset you one more time. And the government seems a little bit perplexed too. And so they filed this, this uh, motion, uh, which we put up on the board there, motion of additional evidence or notice of additional evidence to tell the judge, he is flouting your judicial authority. This is contumacious behavior. He is thumbing his nose in writing, saying he's never going to appear. You can drag me there. You'll have to come get me, you know, like some 1940s gangster in a movie. I'll never be taken alive. Okay, balls in your court, Judge Bosberg. We admire your work at the grand jury level and the decisions that you've made, but I don't understand this one. This guy should be picked up as I'm making this hot take and dragged for the luxury of his home and his family uh, and the basement that he probably lives in and dragged across the District of Columbia and brought before you. And if you don't like his answers, which I don't think you're going to, or his Twitter account, you should put him in jail for a few days as punishment. I'll follow, as I have followed almost all of the Jan 6 defendants, all of them, including the ones that continue, continue to flout the authority of the federal government and the justice system, even while they await trial, even while they await uh, sentencing and bring it to you on hot takes, just like this one, only on the Midas Touch Network. It's the only place you can find it. We pull all these kind of stories together. We curate the best of them. And then we do a full length podcast where only on the Midas Touch Network on Wednesdays and Saturdays that I co-anchor. And then if you like this kind of content, there's a few ways you can help. Give me a thumbs up. It helps with the algorithms, helps keep this content coming to you. You can write a comment. I'll respond. You can follow me, Michael Popak, on all things social media at MS Popak. This is Michael Popak, Legal AF Reporting. At Midas Touch, we are unapologetically pro-democracy and we demand justice and accountability. That's why we're spreading our message to Convict 45. That's right, gear up right now with your Convict 45 tees and pins at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.